So 2023 isn't an issue for Norwich, but could there be problems in 2024? With 2021's profits no longer in the assessment period and maximum losses potentially only 31 million, this would mean Norwich would need to make a million in profit to avoid breaching these rules. Uh, this is why this really, really hurts and um, this is something what we have to correct quickly. Having missed out on promotion back to the Premier League, let's dive into the financial story of Norwich City. It's been a roller coaster for Norwich since 2014. Three promotions and four relegations, but the Canaries are facing a third straight season in the Championship. On the sidelines, Caro Road has seen a steady turnover of managers in the dugout. Adams, Neil, Irvin, Fark, Smith, Wagner, and now Thorup. But what about off the pitch? What's happening behind the scenes? I'm excited. I hope that they are excited as well. Uh Revenues went on the same ride over the decade, reflecting the financial impact of promotion and relegation from the Premier League. 2023's championship season delivered 75.6 million, their best in the second tier, but 58 million below the season before. Across the league, Norwich were top of the revenue pile. So what fueled this drop? Let's dive into the revenue streams. Match day revenues delivered 14.2 million, a 16% drop from their peak a year before. Underlying attendances at Carrow Road though have remained robust. Regardless of division, these have remained above 26,000. Next, broadcasting revenues where we see the biggest drop. Parachute assisted 2023 generated 49 million, less than half than what Norwich raked in the Premier League the season before. Finally, commercial revenues, which also dropped following relegation, but the 10 million brought in 2023 was the best return for a year in the championship. By league position, it's clear to see the drop-off between Premier League and the championship. And on average, Norwich have generated 59 million a year in the second tier, just 53% of Premier League returns. Yeah, but I'm not happy, obviously. Now let's dive into profit. The bottom line has also yo-yoed. Five years in the black and five in the red. Though heavy losses in the last two seasons could be a cause for concern. Despite the largest revenue in the league in 2023, Norwich turned in one of the biggest operating losses at 21 million. So what's caused this? Let's find out in our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue and dive into staff costs. Wages expand and contract with revenue. And in 2023, staff costs shrunk to 56 million, their lowest in four years and under half the year before in the Prem. As a proportion of revenues, 2023 staff costs made up 75% of revenue. However, as parachute payments diminish, this may well put further strain on wage budgets. But after factoring in staff costs, the financial benefits of Premier League football are clear. Next up, operating costs. These have also undulated, 2023 the highest at 17 million. Net costs the year before were reduced though, as Norwich brought in 6 million in loan fees to offset costs. But at EBITDA level, the financial roller coaster begins to take shape. Third up, stadium and facilities. These have slowly increased over the decade, but remain below 4 million a year. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. Norwich have had net transfer costs in 7 out of 10 seasons, with the most recent seasons the heaviest at 24 and 20 million respectively, with the club investing in players such as Gabriel Sara, Christos Solis and Milot Rashica. 2018 and 2021 saw healthy transfer profits though, fueled by the sales of James Madison and Emiliano Buendia. But with less big ticket sales in recent years, operating losses have exceeded 20 million the last two seasons. And what about financial fair play? Given two years in the championship and Norwich only providing secure funding in 2023, max losses for this three-year spell could be just 23 million. Starting with operating profit, we then add in Norwich's increasing finance costs. Then, Norwich are allowed to exclude certain costs such as youth development, women's football and specific promotion costs as well as adjustments relating to COVID. These aren't disclosed, so we're now in the realm of estimates. We're assuming 6 million of allowable expenses and a further 10 million in 2021 
for promotion and COVID adjustments. Add this in and we get to Norwich's PSR losses. Just 1.3 million supported by 2021's strong performance. So 2023 isn't an issue for Norwich, but could there be problems in 2024? With 2021's profits no longer in the assessment period and maximum losses potentially only 31 million, this would mean Norwich would need to make 8 million in profit to avoid breaching these rules. Uh, this is why this really, really hurts and um, this is something what we have to correct quickly. Whilst departures of Andres Omar Bamadeli and Max Ahrens could start to bridge the gap, will Norwich's other stars be in the shop window when the transfer window opens on the 14th of June? Well, we have to react, that's all you can do. Um... Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBIT dial line items, is a tale of two halves. Norwich consistently brought in cash until 2018, but then the script flips. Other than 2020, cash has frequently flown out. But over the decade, total operational cash outflows have been just 9 million. Now, let's shift our attention back to transfers. Another yo-yo for Norwich. Five years of cash in, five years of cash out. But over the 10 years, that's another net spend of 37 million. Add those together and the trajectory for Norwich is a concern. Heavy cash outflows in recent years means the Canaries have spent 46 million over the last decade. So has any funding been required? Norwich's change in funding model is clear. Relying on self-sufficiency until 2019, cash injections have now become regular, with total funding of 86 million over the decade. This change in strategy has resulted in Norwich's net debt spiraling to 83 million. So as parachute payments decline, Will Norwich be able to navigate profit and sustainability rules, as well as mounting another challenge to gain promotion back to the Premier League? Only time will tell.